You're listening to the Fantasy Football Podcast with Charles Barr and John Chapman. Here we go, episode 23, 23, Michael Jordan. That is what's happening, man. We are we are here and we are ready to win six championships. That's what's going to happen here. It doesn't even make sense, but it works for me. Yeah, no, that's what this is all about. This episode specifically <laughs> is about winning playoff and championship fantasy football leagues. We're about that business. But first, we got some cool news. So, John, take it away. Yeah, um, the podcast has done great so far. Obviously, this is our first year going uh, full-time with this bad stuff. And it's been a blast. We've got 23 episodes in. But we are joining FullPressCoverage.com, which is an absolutely – it's an awesome site that's just getting started and what it is is a bunch of sports writers that's worked for other companies, some people I've worked with in the past, that actually know what's going on. And Love we're it. throwing everything else out, and we are just focusing on content. And the whole idea here is to be a one-stop shop. So instead of having your fantasy website, then your NFL website, then you go to another place for draft content, so on and so forth, we're just covering it all on one site. Um, we've already got about 60 writers plugged in. And it's just going to be awesome. It's fullpresscoverage.com. And we're going to, we have team, team sites, division sites, fantasy football. I mean, it's all 100% just under one wing. So definitely go give them a follow, follow on Twitter. And make sure you check out the website. It's still in progress, but this is going to be a game changer. So just kind of throwing that out there. Uh, this is something that I really do believe in. And uh, we're going to put a lot of time into this. So... Shout out to Full Press Coverage. It's on the up and coming, and it's going to be one of those sites that you're going to want to bookmark at the top. You know what I'm talking about? Like you got your bank stuff and your Twitter stuff. And FPC, it's going to be right up there. So just just giving you the heads up there. And we can do some Twitter shout outs at the end, correct? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Word. All right, so let's show them what we're all about. We're all about diving into news that's relevant to your fantasy football. Then we kind of hit into waiver wires, and then – Uh, This is kind of a different kind of week, and I have a bit of a conspiracy segment that I want to lay upon you. But let's start first with Amari Cooper. Tell us what's going on with that kid. Man, so if you saw the play, one, first off, shout out to the Raiders' offense. Um, (laughs) They lost some playmakers pretty early on. And so Amari Cooper goes out with a terrible concussion. It was absolutely devastating hit. And one of those things where it's just like, ah, you don't want to watch it. But it turns out it's not just a concussion. He has a sprained ankle as well. So the chances oh. of him playing are very, very low. Um, having said that as well, as we were about to hit record, the NFL just announced that his partner in crime, Michael Trabtree, Michael Trabtree, um, <laughs> and Aqib Tlaib, they are now suspended an additional two games for that brawl. So awesome. that just came down. And if you – I mean <laughs> – they might be suspended for the NFL, but man, let's get them in a UFC octagon and let's let these two guys go at it. Because uh, they are, man, you talk about just two of like the, I don't know what to say that's politically correct. Just thugs. <laughs> that's all I can say. Just absolute thugs going at it. And it was fun to watch, but you could totally tell that neither one of those two people uh, put team first. It's all about themselves and their image. But right. hey, and what I would say is this. Here's what they should do if they get in a fight. If I was Michael Crabtree, yeah. I would just hand Aqib Tlaib a gun because he shoots himself. He's already done that before. <laughs> Did you hear about that this summer? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he shot himself in the leg. That's how drunk he got. So that's fun. Wow. But, um, and, you know, he also has a special talent of just ripping necklaces off. Shout out to him because he's good at it, okay? That's right. He, the chain breaker. He needs he to did- just endorse that name. That's sweet, man. Like, honestly, I didn't even – I saw it happen the first time. I was like, oh, he took his chain. This time, he worked on his technique. Bam, bam. He was in and out, and he had his chain. He's so, dirty, man. So, Crabtree and uh, Tlaib, bye-bye for two games. And they're not super fantasy relevant. Uh, Crabtree is to a degree, right. but not not really. I mean, right. the, they've looked pretty awful. But and next up – So you got to downgrade that entire offense, especially this week. Because if oh, Amari yeah. Cooper and Crabtree are out, David Carr is not a fan of fantasy startable option. Uh, you're looking at a loaded box. And so maybe Jared Cook, um, the tight end there, you got to bump him up a little bit. But everybody else for the Raiders, you got you got to downgrade huge. 
I'm seeing like this theme of like karma. Okay, and next up is Martellus <laughs> Bennett. <laughs> he was back for just a couple weeks, and they just put him on IR. And now he probably should have been on IR anyway, and he actually wanted to, and then he got cut, and he's like, "Oh wait a second, I can go play for a team that uh, can win a championship." Yeah, All right, sounds good. So he might end up getting another ring anyway. So hats off to him. Yeah, absolutely. Greg Olson, I'm glad to see this guy back. I really am. I like him a lot. Man, I love him too, and I picked him up, and we, we told you guys Greg Olson was going to win some fantasy championships. Now, we also said don't start him right away and wait and see what happens. Yep. There were so many articles that were like, plug him in your lineup, plug him in your lineup, and that's just not the way it works when people come back from injuries like that. So they put him on a limited snap count, and he hurt his uh, the same foot that was injured. Now, having said that... Um, Everything seems to be okay, and he's in line to play again this week. But again, here's what you do whenever there's this new hot commodity or somebody coming off an injury. You wait for them to prove it on your bench. Once they verify that Greg Olson is old Greg Olson, then you put him in. If you played him last week, you got one point. And congratulations, you played yourself. Like You have to wait and verify. You verify it, then you put them into the lineup. The same could be said for Kelvin Benjamin, who went over to the Bills, right? Man, I I really thought that he was going to be a heck of a play, especially in PPR. But here's this is what's happened. So, man, I don't understand Sean McDermott and his press conference skills or decision-making. I love Sean McDermott. <laughs> yeah, me too. But he comes out and he says, oh, well, Kevin Benjamin's fine. Then he says, actually, he has a torn meniscus. And then they ask him after that, so how long are you expecting him to be out? He says, oh, he's day-to-day. Like that happened in one like interview. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't. So you can play through a torn meniscus. Um, it is a huge discomfort uh, issue. It's beyond discomfort. Anytime you plant, it just absolutely somebody's stabbing you in your knee. But you can play yeah. through it. Um, but you know, but he's Sh- not going to. Sean McDermott is, and I love him because he's a, a product of Jim Johnson. See, I love him, but he's not media trained, and you can tell he's he's probably a great coach. A really good defensive coach, not a great offensive coach. Um, Do you know what his favorite number is? Five. (laughs) Ah, Go back and listen to last week if you did not. I don't know if that's his favorite number, but it would be pretty cool if it was. It would be cool and creepy. (laughs) Uh, Next up, giving stock up to Drake, not the rapper, the football player, but there's something going on with Damian Williams. Man, his shoulder got definitely messed up. And so what happens is... Kenyon Drake comes in, and I'm just like, I have Kenyon Drake in three leagues. And so I'm just like, heck yes, this is going to be so great. And in the leagues I lost Chris Thompson, I'm just sliding him into there. Oh, he fumbles the very first touch he got after the injury. I'm just like, great. But the backup got hurt as well. And it's looking like, they haven't come out and said this, but it's looking like Damian Williams will not be playing. Now, this is against the Broncos, okay? The Broncos are tough, but they have given up rushing yards and especially whenever you have somebody that's going to get receptions out of the backfield Kenyon drake if damian williams is out is a solid rb2 um as long as damian williams is out even if that's against denver denver's not playing with any heart right now and they Gosh, have all they the talent pathetic. yeah and, and they have all the talent in the world they're just not using it you see it they're not really giving it their all and they did just announce that simeon is going to be their starter This week, now, he is not a fantasy viable option, but what this does mean is he has been the most capable for Demarius Thomas. So Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders doesn't look right. He's playing about 90% off that leg. So I'm not full go on him yet, but Demarius Thomas, I have no problem um, starting him. No issue there. Which is sad to say. I mean, he's one of the best, and he, he hasn't had a great year. But how sad is that that you have to say, oh, he's safe to start? Like, he should yeah. be a first to second round pick and a wide receiver one every year. You just got to – come on, John Elway. Get this guy some talent. Seriously. A guy who's kind of been battling through some issues the past three, four weeks and somebody who's on two of my fantasy football leagues, so please get better. But Fournette, what's, is, is it serious with the ankle? I, I, I don't know. And the reason why I say that is he's off and on. He, he's playing great. He looks great. And then you get into the fourth quarter of the game, and there were three straight series where he didn't go in. TJ Yeldon was in. And this was a close competitive game, maybe the game of the week. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you were watching it. You have your Blake Bortles tattoo. Woo-hoo. Um, 
<laughs> but so there's three straight series where he's standing on the sideline with his helmet. He didn't even have his helmet on. The offense is on the field, and he's standing a little bit away from the coaches, just looking pissed off. And so, I did he say something? Um, you know, there's been discipline issues with him and the coaching staff already. Like, what's the issue there? It, right. it makes me just a little bit hesitant. So if you are the the owner of Fournette, go get if he's available, which he probably isn't. Um, go get his backup, which is Yeldon. So Yeldon's the guy that you need to get there. He was the one that was taking snaps away from him. And just, just hold him just in case. So if he's available, go grab him. And don't start him. not saying start Yeldon. I'm just saying hold on and see. What if another suspension happens? What if the ankle issue is too bad and something bad happens? You have a starter and a good run offense. So yep. just something to keep in mind. And not Chris Ivory, the guy who fumbled the ball on the one snap that he got. Oh. All right. On to a guy who you're gaining serious man crushage on, and that's C.J. Bethard. Man, C.J. Bethard, yeah, he's one of the toughest SOBs in the league. If you watch his games, he takes an absolute beating. Now, he gets hurt, uh, his knee, with about one minute left in the fourth quarter. And good old, and this is going to lead us straight into waiver wire. Yeah, Jimmy yeah, Garoppolo transition. comes in. That's, that's a pro- professional right there, transition. Yeah. <laughs> um, plan that, hashtag. Um but the idea is this. Jimmy Garoppolo comes in, throws two passes, converts a fourth down in like a quick uh, one-minute drill, and throws a touchdown. Two for two, perfect passer rating with a touchdown. Now, yeah. do I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a fantasy starter? Absolutely not. But the potential is there. This is what I – so earlier when we were talking about Olsen, this is what you should do with Garoppolo. Pick him up off of waivers. He's going to be free. And just stash him. If you are in deep leagues, if you're in more than 12-team leagues, uh, any of those things, just pick them up and stash them and see what happens. Uh, this yeah. is a Kyle Shanahan offense, and C.J. Beathard was a quarterback one two out of his six weeks. And so, like, he's not that great of a quarterback. He's a rookie, so on and so forth. But if you can get a, a quarterback one, you pick him up, you stash him, you let him prove that he can do it, and then you can play him. Uh, yeah. Again, he's not like a top waiver wire priority, but at quarterback position, there's not a lot out there. So, so something to think about. Jimmy Garoppolo looks like uh, an extra on Saturday Night Fever to me. That's what he looks like. He does. My wife finds him physically attractive, which actually makes me kind of happy. Like I'm kind of cool. I'm like, hey, maybe she'll watch more games. Yeah, there, you got to look at the plus side always. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, speaking of a guy who's always looked at the plus side and slammed a few shots before every game, Josh Gordon is a potential waiver wire ad this week. What say you? Man, you should have added him a long time ago. We told you to go pick him up. The guy is absolutely phenomenal. The very first day of practice, whenever he was out on the field, um, one of the coaches came out and said, he is already the best player on this field. Um, and that is factually correct the guy is ripped out of his mind there's zero issues with talent there now it has been a while but if you've been watching the browns game deshaun kaiser is not a great nfl quarterback but can you repeat that statement deshaun kaiser (laughs) is not a great nfl quarterback yet he's he's still the youngest quarterback in the lead by far he's he's still 21 years old he's not even 22 yet but on top of that like if you watched the game last week he was hitting his receivers Corey Coleman dropped a wide open touchdown pass. Like he slings the ball. So whether he, he's going to win games, absolutely not for a while. But he slings the ball, and yeah. he puts his players in position. It's just they drop passes, and so Josh Gordon is going to be fantasy relevant. Now, if you are in a game, this is week thirteen. So most this is the last week of the regular season for most things. Again, preaching. I've already said this, so please listen. You do not okay. start Josh Gordon. If it's a make it and get into the fantasy playoffs, if I lose, I'm out. You don't want to start Josh Gordon. You want to wait. Now, if you don't have any options at receiver or flex, throw him in there. That's fine. But you want to wait and see. So you grab him. You stash him. He goes off. Now I know I can start him with confidence moving forward. That's what Josh Gordon is. Huge home run play for the playoffs. All right. Dontrell Inman had a pretty good game against Philly. Man, the targets are just there. They, he had nine catches. They're just throwing the ball to him nonstop. And so you got to go get guys that are getting targets. That is the worst offense in football. 
and it's them against the 49ers this week. So who's to know? I, my guess is a 6-3 to three game. <laughs> I, I, it's not going to be a 6-3 to three game, but Yikes. it's not going to be a good game either. A guy's uh, name who I'm going to miss saying when he's out of football, Jaquiz Rogers. Man, you he's can't away- even make that up. <laughs> no. That's his real I'm, name. I Jaquizzed everywhere, but it's just <laughs> – nobody knows what it means, but if you said it, People would assume it was dirty, which is really cool. That That is – oh, real quick, uh, let me just edit myself. I think I said he had nine catches. He had nine targets is what I meant to say. I don't know if I said that, but anyway, I just want to be on the record for correcting myself. Yeah, good problems. job. So Jacquez, yeah. Rogers, and Tampa Bay, and people are going to say, oh, man, but he didn't score the touchdowns. No, I'm telling you right now, Jacquez Rogers is the guy. One, he's the best tailback there, um, and he even had a chance to score the touchdowns. He got it down <laughs> early, and then they put in – um, dang it, what's his name? It's right off the top of my head. The running back for Tampa Bay that scored – Barber. Uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Peyton so, Barber. So I know that these are deep ads, but um, what's his name? Got a concussion, muscle hamster. So Jaquiz Rogers is going to be a start <laughs> there. And again, on top of that, um, Jameis Winston started to throw this week. So if he starts, go back and look at what Jaquiz Rogers did whenever Jameis was starting. Um, he was getting a ridiculous amount of touches, targeted like crazy. So, a- absolute. If if Muscle Hamster's out, Jockwiz Rogers is solid flex play. And the last one is at tight end. And I want you to talk about this boy because you texted me, and yeah. you said like on the spot, like this guy's so legit. Well, here's the thing about him. Uh, he moves different. I mean, it, it's not just a guy who you know Sudfield or you know some of these once in a you know week kind of tied in who shows up and you're like, no, oh, I, this guy could be something. No, he moves. He like looks a, the part. He looks the part. He's got wiggle to him. He's athletic as hell. He runs oh. his routes well. So uh, he's somebody who I think is a, a must add. Right, exactly. No, I'm with you there. So uh, he's, he's somebody that you got to pay attention to and you got to look at. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move into my conspiracy theories. You guys ready? It's all actually right. it, it's not a conspiracy theory. All right, we're talking about facts here. So, <laughs> so here it goes. Just follow me. Stay with me, folks. All right, week fourteen is generally a playoff uh, week, right? Um, either it's the first week of your playoffs. There are some week, some leagues that that's the last week of regular season. If that's true for you, fine. Tune this out for a bit. But most of us are starting in week 14, and sometimes that's even week two for some leagues. All right. Week 14 is going to be a mess. All right? It's going it to be is. a mess. Okay? Saints, Falcons. Okay? Panthers, Minnesota. Rams, Philadelphia. Seattle, Jacksonville. Uh, let's see. Okay, so. Jeez. W- right what off I'm... the bat, you're talking elite yes. fantasy guys yep. that are not going to be – not that they're not going to be fantasy relevant – the issue just is they have the toughest matchups going forward. Right. Oh so gosh. Here, so here's the theory. Here's what I'm uh, projecting to you guys is that guys who have gotten you to the playoffs, people who you have relied on, and I'm not saying that you go away from them. What I'm saying is is that they're going to turn from Superman, these superheroes, into being more average than usual. Here, I'll give you – um, actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you my top 11. And why 11? I don't know. It's just weird. That's what it came down to. It goes to. to 11. It, this one goes to 11. That's right. So here's my 11, and we can break them down. Uh, fantasy football studs stock down, okay? Ooh, so all these guys, they're not going to be as good as they have been. That's right. I'm going to start at the bottom. Started from the bottom now I'm here. All right. Fournette. <laughs> Why, why is Fournette going to struggle in week 14, say you? Why is he going be, to? Because he's playing Seattle. Oh. Do you know how many yards that Seattle is allowing? Man, not a lot. Less than 100 for sure rushing. 98 yards per game, okay, and 19 points given up. <clears throat> and that's as a team. That That's team rushing stats. That's not versus one player. That's right. That's, that's yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah. Next up, at number 10, Ben Roethlisberger. Not that he's a big starter for a lot of you folks out there, but he can be good. Oh, real quick, I'm going to piggyback with uh, Leonard Fournette. He's got Seattle, then he's got Houston. 
So he's got three bottom three matchups back to back. So next two weeks going to be rough for him. All right, Big Ben. Big Ben is going against one of the best defenses in the league in Baltimore. So I'm just going to follow that up at number nine at Le'Veon Jeez, Bell. Man. Le'Veon Bell matched up on C.J. Mosley. Hey, obviously Bell's going to get his. But again, the theory is that that they're not going to have production. They're not going to have as much production. Okay, so they're going to. Are you saying that you wouldn't start them, or you just need to limit your expectations? There's a, Yes, limit your expectations, but there's a few guys, based on who you have on your bench, that I absolutely say you have to question whether you're going to start them or not, and it's actually my number one guy, and we'll get to him. Okay? All right. Hold on a <clears throat> number eight is Jared Goff and company. So whether that's Robert Woods, Cup, or Watkins, they're going against Philly. And again – I'm not saying that they're going – he's going to be you know, below par. I'm just saying you're going to have an average QB that week. Okay, so let me ask you this question because I'm, I'm in this situation in one of my leagues. The two okay. quarterbacks that I have, I have Dak Prescott okay. and I have um, who you just talked about. Dang it. Where's it at? Jared Goff. Um, okay. Now, I, I've loved Dak all year, but he's been terrible. So he's at New York Giants, which have a terrible defense. Right. Whereas Goff is playing against Philly. Who would you start in that situation? Oh, I'm going Dak all day. Are you? Even though he's been terrible? <clears throat> I'm going Dak all day. I just I, – first of all, yeah, if there's anything – Yeah, defense is legit. Philly's defense is unreal. Yeah, and, and not to mention that uh, they're probably adding Sidney Jones that week. So it's going to get interesting, Okay. All right, so loving this so far. These are big names we've mentioned. So Yeah, and so again, when you hear these players' names, just put a star by their name and just think, let's see what other options are available and right. keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. Not, you can't go away from your studs. No one's saying that. All I'm saying is be prepared. Keep it in mind, right, based on who you have on your bench. Right. Number seven is Jimmy Graham. Um, uh, Jacksonville's defense, I'm going to talk about them at the very end of this. They're different. They're an elite defense. To me, t- everyone talks about Minnesota. Again, they're awesome, but nobody is as good as Jacksonville right now. They can do it every which way, and I think that his production will go down significantly. And I can listen see to these matchups for Jimmy Graham. <coughs> Philly at Jacksonville Rams. Yep. Oh, yeah. Whew. Well, actually, let me tell you something about the Rams, though. Rams have a sneaky – I got a sneaky stat for you. All right. They, I like this. 27th against the pass. Can you believe huh. it? It makes sense because they're scoring so many points and they've been ahead in games yep. by so much yep. that teams are throwing to catch up. So garbage time counts. Garbage time does count. Counts in football. Ask All Blake right. Bortles. Ask Blake Bortles. <laughs> Todd Gurley at number six going against Philly who averages giving up 68 yards a game. You're hurting it's... me, Charles. These are all the studs. That we've been telling people to like that they are go tos, but it yeah. just shows you uh, the the schedule matters. It matters. Oh man, if you look at Todd Gurley versus oh, Philly I... yeah. at Seattle at Tennessee, all oh, yeah. bottom six plays. Those are the playoff <coughs> schedules. Did I but say again... sixty eight? I, I meant sixty five yards a game and only seventeen Jeez. points given up. Okay, you got to hope me... he gets those catches out of the backfield. That's got to be your hope with Todd Gurley moving forward. Yeah. Let me tell you, number five, I'm predicting almost like a, a, just a terrible day, not even an average day. This is a guy who's a non-starter for me in the playoffs, Christian McCaffrey. Ooh. He's a non, he's a non-start. He plays Minnesota, and Minnesota don't play that. And I, and also too, I, I just foresee this being a bad game for number four, Cam Newton. Cam Newton has been playing a bit cocky. He holds onto that ball too long. Let me tell you something. Just like Minnesota <laughs> showed yeah. the Rams, Minnesota's going to show the Panthers. That is a uh, complete football team, which is crazy to say. And their athletic defense is it's, it's unreal. It's unreal. Now on the other side, coming right back at him, at number three I've got Diggs and Thien, okay? And that's, that's a tough pill to swallow, but they're playing the Panthers, okay? The Panthers, the Panthers' defense is something serious. Check this out. It's Third, finally got back to where it should be. Last year was an anomaly, but this year it's been great. Third best run defense, sixth best pass defense, and they're only giving up 18 points a game. They're serious, okay? So 
again, coming back to the theory, folks, not saying that they're not going to be productive, but you're looking at fantasy points down. So if you're averaging 105, and that's what you've been, I think you're going to probably average more like 90, 92 that week. And I'll come to the last conclusion here in a second. And number two is Case Keenum. He's going to get destroyed that week. He's going to get brought down to reality about who he really is and who what his girlfriend really looks like. <laughs> Man, he's playing some good ball, though. But, he yeah, I, I, it's going to come to a close. A lot of people are going to rely on him and start him in their playoffs, and it's not going to go well. A guy I would – bench that week and number one the number one fantasy quarterback in all of the nfl fantasy football universe i say you bench him his name is russell wilson and he's playing jacksonville can i tell you about jacksonville's defense for a second check this out dude (laughs) i love these hot takes man i love it dude okay they're only allowing 168 passing yards per game okay They're only allowing 68 running yards per game, only giving up 17.4 points per game. They're going to lock their shit down. And it's at Jacksonville. It's at Jacksonville, okay? Now, is Blake Bortles going to probably put Seattle in some positions to score? For sure. But this whole running around, dancing thing that Russell Wilson does isn't going to work against Miles Jack. And this extremely fast front yeah. seven and corners that will lock your receivers down and make them, you know, just want to fast forward to the next week. I'm telling you, it's probably going to be a close game, but that defense is going to limit that offensive production. And here's the ultimate. So what I did was is I went and I highlighted fantasy studs, okay? Ooh. And I put them in red for those who had a rough week 14 and those in green who are going to have a positive. This is awesome, man. So you're not only explaining why I, why I have a problem, you're going to solve it for me. I'm going to try to solve it for you. <laughs> <laughs> not really, actually. But what, I did, <laughs> but what I wanted to highlight was is that th- these are the players that are going to have issues that week, and these are the players that I believe that the teams one, two, and three in your playoff seats, these are the guys that are on those teams. And so here's my prediction. I believe that in 12-man teams where six teams make the playoffs, I think that um, it's more likely for seeds five and six to win the entire league this year than in any other year because the fantasy studs will be stifled in week 14. And, and unless you have a bye that week or it's regular season, uh, that is an awful week to have had an awesome year and have all this production – and then all of a sudden you're going against Melvin Gordon, LaShawn McCoy, and let's say Miller on one guy's team who have amazing matchups with Tom Brady, Hopkins, and Larry Fitzgerald who all have insane matchups that week and barely squeaked into the playoffs. They're going to annihilate the first team. They're going to so, kill them. Yeah, and, and I mean that's the thing. Like If you've got guys like Russell Wilson and Todd Gurley and just these studs that have gone off, and that's the thing. You've got to play the matchups and look at the matchups, and that's huge. Now, again, let me reiterate, we're not yeah. telling you to bench these guys. Nope. We're just nope. telling you that you need to put it into effect. You need to make sure if you have other options, you you got to go that way. Don't bench these guys. You just have to totally taper your expectations down. Matchups yep. matter. Absolutely. And don't uh, also sleep on the fact that some of these places – might have some weather issues, okay? We're looking at December 10th at Pittsburgh, Baltimore at Pittsburgh, okay? It could not be so pretty there. It could be kind of nasty there. We've got Indianapolis at Buffalo. Uh, You know, we've got just some games that could be definitely impacted by weather that week, so just something to consider. And then you've got Philly at the Rams, at the Rams, so they're in L.A., so it's going to be beautiful, so you're looking at some good, you know, potential passing. It is beautiful here. I live in the Los Angeles area recently, and it is wonderful. Shy town Anyways, I don't live in Chicago. I live in, I live in the suburbs. I'm not in Chicago. Anyways, awesome. man, I got passionate about it because I saw week 14, and I'm like, oh, no, my team is going to struggle. i got to figure something out. So This is awesome, man. So, And I'll say this as we, we pull this to a close. Hats off to you, Chuck. That was awesome, hey, man. I, I got hey. a little uh, stimulated listening yeah, to that, ooh, so thank you. Yeah, thank you kind of did it for me. Thank you. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I hope to, uh, you know, prove myself right in week 14 and then people can come back and be like, hey, I'm glad you said something. I changed my lineup this way. It helped me out. Hopefully it helps you guys. That's what we're here for. Also, totally in daily fantasy, if you play FanDuel or DraftKings or whatever, like stay away from those guys. Pay attention to the matchups. Don't follow the big names. Uh, be smart. And that's what we're here for, smart fantasy football players. Absolutely. So you just want to talk about full press one more time before we head out of here? Yeah, let me just give a shout-out to their Twitter handle. Um, it is FPC underscore FF. So full press coverage underscore fantasy football, FPC underscore FF. Uh, go check out the, the site. It's pretty legit. It just got launched this morning. Um, it's going to be fully functional with lots of other stuff. But totally get in on this early because uh, it's going to be one of those things that takes off because it's by all the writers. It's the same people that you've been reading, but instead of working for other people, we're working for ourselves, and it's going to take off. So, again, FPC underscore FF. So something to look into. All right, man. And signing off, this is at Host Chuck B on Twitter, and this is JL underscore Chapman. Hey, you Woo! got it right. You got it right. That's right. And this is fantasy football, question mark. All right. Peace.